Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. St. John Senior Ministry will host a holiday party here at the church on Wednesday, December 21st from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. This invitation is for St. John's members, family, and friends. Be sure to RSVP with Reverend Raymond Wallace, ministry leader, by December 18th. Mark your calendars. Sunday, December 25th, our Christmas service will be streaming and there will not be an in-person worship on this Sunday. Additionally, join us for our New Year's Eve service and brunch on December 31st, starting at 12 noon. We look forward to seeing you. Join us every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let us gather and study the Word together. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dialing number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312-522. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, mail to the church, or during a drive-by. We are grateful for your giving. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. As we continue to pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray for one another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day. Beautiful, beautiful day. A little chilly, <laughs> but it is December. And in this month, we usually start talking about enjoying the idea that the Lord left his throne in glory to come here because there was a master plan for our salvation. That's the beginning of that song that we talk about. We say, He came from heaven to earth to show the way, lead a perfect life, to show us how it was supposed to be done. How love was supposed to save the world, and he did it. So let's start with that song. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, say. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, come on. Lord, I, Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to I'm save so us. I'm so glad you came to 
Let's do it. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let's do it again.
under heaven can save us Jesus Jesus no other name I know bless that wonderful name of Jesus there is a name I love to hear I love to sing its worth it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus because he first love me this is the day that the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it i'll try that again this is the day that the lord has made we ought to be glad in this is the day that the lord has made somebody ought to rejoice and be glad in it amen i don't know how you feel about it but it's good to be in the land of the living one more time he didn't have to let us live but I'm so glad that he did. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome one and all to our morning worship this morning. Can I just say this real quick? I thank God this morning. I see Sister Zuri McCune here with us this morning. Amen. I don't know if y'all know, and I don't know if it's my right to say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyhow. Sister Zuri had a tragic eye accident. In other words, they were worried about her losing her eye. Amen. But you know what, Sister Zuri has two things on her side. Number one, she's got youth. Somebody ought to say youth. You know, the body know how to regenerate itself when you're young. The second thing she got is she got God on her side. Amen. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, we ask or even think somebody ought to give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I know she's glad to get out the house because, you know, being cooped up in the house. Yes. Amen. Being cooped up in the house, can't move, can't do this, can't do that, but have to just stay like that. Amen. So we're grateful how good God is. And God is in the blessing business. Amen. 
Amen. He blessed us all to get up this morning and come out to his house of worship one more time. Amen. I hope he stays that snow away, but he certainly blessed us. He certainly blessed us. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God, we're grateful and thankful for this day. We thank you for how good you've been. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, you have brought us safe thus far. And for that, Lord, we are forever grateful. God, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come out to your house of worship one more time. We pray even now, Lord, that you will inhabit the praise of your people. Spirit of the living God, move like you want to in this place. Move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. God, let us feel your presence today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. For you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen, amen, amen. Our scripture this morning is Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. Luke 4, 16 through 21. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our morning hymn this morning. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem.
Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. St. John Senior Ministry will host a holiday party here at the church on Wednesday, December 21st from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. This invitation is for St. John's members, family, and friends. Be sure to RSVP with Reverend Raymond Wallace, ministry leader, by December 18th. Mark your calendars. Sunday, December 25th, our Christmas service will be streaming and there will not be an in-person worship on this Sunday. Additionally, join us for our New Year's Eve service and brunch on December 31st, starting at 12 noon. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen again. Amen again. Um, can y'all do me a favor? Um, tell Reverend Wallace that I'm RSVPing right now for the senior, uh, yeah, right now. I like a good party. Amen. I like a good party. And I like to come and party with the seniors. Amen. So I'm, please RSVP me right now. Amen. Y'all, y'all, listen, I'm trying to tell you, we, we, got, we got seniors, but they're not really seniors. They're like seasoned people. Amen. I'm, I, listen, I'm trying to tell y'all. We, we, I, I come out there and, you know, you, you watch them and I say, wait a minute, I thought y'all was, okay, all right, all right. So, so come on, I, I'm RSVPing for that right now. Don't, don't forget, don't forget that uh, Christmas Day, Christmas Day um, at 10 a.m., we have service at 10 a.m. At 10 a.m., you will be able to see the broadcast on the YouTube channel, amen. So uh, make sure you, you join us in our Christmas celebration on Sunday morning. And do me a favor, do it with your families, amen. Make sure everybody in your family sits down and watches service together, amen. It's, huh? Oh, thank you. No Sunday school on Christmas Day. All right. So make sure you're sitting down with your families at 10 a.m., amen, to, to make sure you watch our Christmas celebration. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. And then don't forget New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, we'll be having service at noon, at noon on New Year's Eve. Um, and following that, we're going to have a little, a little light brunch. Uh, amen, a little light brunch, light brunch. But if I have it my way, we're going to have like fish and grits and... But it's going to be light. <laughs> it's, all right. All right. So, so come on. Come on to service at, at noon. And then following that, we'll have brunch. And then, and then you know, you could go ahead on home and relax. Amen. Watch the ball. Do they still do the ball dropping? I don't even know. They do? Thank you. You go at home and you can watch the ball drop. Amen. Or you can watch someone else's service that's being streamed if you want to be up that late at night. But we want to make sure that we look out for our seasoned saints here. Amen. And you don't have to worry about driving at night. We're going to do it all right there in the afternoon. Amen. 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 Well, it is prayer time. It's prayer time in the building. And um, I'm not sure who's scheduled to pray today. Um, Deacon Schultz. Amen. All right. Come on. Stand on your feet if you don't mind. We serve a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. If you have an issue or concern that you want to bring before an almighty God, we serve a God who is able to do anything but fail. If you desire prayer this morning, please make your way to the altar um, if you so desire to, or you could just stand where you are, and we're going to ask if Deacon Roger Schultz would come and lead us to the throne of mercy and grace. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads and unite our hearts in prayer. Oh God, our gracious and eternal Father, we are thankful this morning for your many blessings. First, that you allowed us to get up under our own strength, soundness of mind, able to tend to our personal needs, had food to eat, clothes to wear, and would made it possible for us to come to this place of assembly where we are with others who claim Christ as Savior. We're thankful for all of your blessings to us. We thank you for hearing about the young lady whose eye has been healed, just as we're glad to hear about other recoveries that people have experienced because of injury or illness. We're thankful. We know that you are a God who is able to do all things but fail. Lord. We're thankful for this Advent season and for this opportunity to remember that Christ came into the world. Uh, we're thankful. 
that we know that he died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried, raised for our justification, seen of many, went back to heaven, sits at your right hand, and he's coming back again. Lord, I'm thankful for that, thankful for this season. And as we think about the Advent and think about Christmas, so much focus is on gift giving, so much focus is on uh, the things of this world, and little thought is given about what it means that Christ came into this world. Uh, Lord, I pray your blessings on this congregation. First, uh, that the pastor might lead according to your will and the word he brings this morning might be food for our souls and might guide us in our thinking. I pray, O oh Lord, that you give us wisdom. Wisdom, Lord, that only you can give, that we might first be wise and understanding that we need to listen more than we speak. There's so much talking going on, so, much th so many things are being said, and uh, much of what we hear, particularly as it relates to you, uh, seems to be off track. And I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear and a heart to be open understanding. You need to open our understanding to the truth of your word. People want to be on stage, but they don't know what they're talking about. God, open our understanding. Give us discernment to be able to uh, distinguish between that which is true and in harmony with your word and that which comes from man's own origin. Bless us, God. And in particular, we con are concerned about the young people and the young families. Uh, I pray, God, that you might bless the young people to come to know Christ as their savior, that you might enable them to hear someone tell them that you love them, that you're concerned about them, that you are, that you died for their sins, that Christ died for their sins, that all they have to do, my Lord, is open their hearts to them, that they might put their hope and trust in you. Bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. We read that there are mental health issues arising among young people, and God, we know that the only way that can happen is because they're dealing with uh, adults that are untogether and not leading them in the right direction or misdirecting them. God, it's the young people that we're concerned about because that's our future. Not only my grandchildren, but other people's young children and grandchildren. Bless them to first come to know that Christ died for them and that he loves them. And then, my Father, that for those who are students or in grade school, high school, or in college, that they might focus on the purpose why they're in school. Bless them, God, to know that they need you first and that you're able to open their understanding to the studies that they've got to uh, learn. But bless our young people, oh God. Yes, there are many seniors who have various issues, but uh, Lord, I pray that they might, we seniors, might be worthy examples for young people to look at and that we not uh, be in the position of always begging and have our hand out, but rather be in a position where we can offer help and assistance as you blessed us. Work, Lord, in our individual lives. Uh, you are a God who loves so much that you're willing to forgive us, a God who is so concerned that you understand us, that you are merciful toward us, that you haven't dealt with us after our sins according to our sins, but God, as far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us, and for that I thank you. I thank you and admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've stumbled along the way, that my mouth has been open when it should have been shut. I've done things that were not acceptable, but God, forgive me and guide me, Lord, that I might walk in the way of righteousness for your name's sake. For as much as I uh, am my own person, I am a representative of you, and I desire not to do anything that would not represent you appropriately. God, we pray for this congregation, that you might meet their needs individually and collectively. For those who are sick, heal. For those who are confused, open their minds, give them clarity of thought. For those who are concerned, scared, and don't know what to do, that they might turn to you and open, their, open your word, and you open their understanding. God, that they might know of a truth and certainty that you do love them, 
that you won't desert them, that you won't leave them, but that you'll be with them. But you've said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. My God, I pray for this congregation that it might continue to be uh, faithful to the gospel, doing the good works that give glory and honor to you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
for everything. Yeah. And that's why we know it's exceedingly, abundantly, yeah. above all. God does it. All you could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you.
Hallelujah. How many know that we serve an able God? Oh, come on. Don't fool me now. How many serve an able God? He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that's already at work on the inside of us. God is able. Yes, he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we're grateful and thankful for this day. We thank you for being an able God, able to do all things well, able to keep us when we can't keep ourselves, able to pick us up when we fall down, able to turn us around, able to heal our body, able to do all things, God. God, we thank you for being an able God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. God, we just want to say thank you. Now may the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thine sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let all of God's people say amen. Amen, amen. He is able. He's able. He's able. The book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk from this thought this morning, a sign of God's promise. A sign of God's promise. I solicit your prayers. My brothers and sisters, isn't it amazing how prophecy works? True prophecy has implications that are both near and far. As we read this account of Isaiah, this 7th chapter and 14th verse had both present day implications and future significance. The prophecy refers to God giving King Ahaz a sign of, a, of deliverance and it also refers to Jesus who will bring ultimate deliverance. Look with me at the circumstances surrounding this prophecy as I share this morning about a sign of God's promise. King Ahaz was the grandson of Uzziah. Um, and Uzziah was the king of Judah. Y'all with me here? You remember Uzziah was the king that Isaiah referenced when he wrote about seeing the Lord high and lifted up and how his train filled the temple. Uh -huh. Judah now was the southern kingdom that was comprised of two of the tribes of Israel. Ahaz was the king over this southern kingdom. He was a wicked king who worshipped other gods and even sacrificed his own son. He, he was a cowardly, superstitious, hypocritical ruler, one of the worst kings that Judah ever had. When the events of this chapter unfold, the nation of Judah had faced terrible calamity and devastation. The combined armies of northern Israel and Syria began to approach Jerusalem for an impending attack. And Ahaz is challenged to trust God even when it looks like all will soon be lost. When word comes to the king of Judah that they're about to be attacked, he and the people of Judah get scared. But God sends the prophet Isaiah to tell King Ahaz, don't you worry about what you see. I've got everything under control. If I could just stop right there for a moment and encourage somebody today not to worry about what you see. God has got everything under control. 
I know what we see may look bad, but God's got everything under control. I know what we see doesn't look favorable, but God has got everything under control. Somebody needs to be reminded today that what we see is not always what we get. Uh, because God specializes in things that seem impossible. And God is able to do what no other power can do. We may see devastation and destruction. We may see sickness and no solution in sight. We may see turmoil and terrifying circumstances, but what we see is no match for what God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said he'll do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. He's able. How many of you know that he's able this morning? In fact, God tells Isaiah, when you go to King Ahaz, take your son with you, whose name means a remnant shall return. So that they can be assured that what I'm saying is true and that everything will be all right. When Isaiah gets to King Ahaz, he tells him what thus saith the Lord. I know it doesn't look good. I know it doesn't seem like um, it's good. I know it looks like this might be the end, but listen to the words he tells them. Take heed, be quiet, don't fear, and don't let your heart fail. All right. Take heed. In essence, that means calm down, pay attention, listen close. Be quiet. Y'all know what that means? Stop talking about your problems. Close your mouth so that you don't, watch this, talk your way out of your blessing or talk your way out of your miracle or talk your way past the deliverance that God has for you. Don't fear. Stop talking, but then don't fear because all you really need to do is put your trust in a God who's able to do anything but fail. And then don't let your heart faint. Take courage in the Lord who's able to make a way out of no way. Ahaz has stopped trusting in God. Are y'all still with me? Uh, he caught, he's caught between what they've already experienced and seeing the obstacles ahead of them and as a result have lost confidence in God. And sometimes, if we're honest this morning, there may be some people on the scene, some tuning in on the screen, who know or can attest to the fact um, that sometimes we allow our circumstances our concerns, our issues to overwhelm us to the point that we begin to lose trust in God. I need to talk to some real folks this morning who are willing to admit that there are times when it's difficult to trust God. I'm talking about when you can't trace him, when you don't know what he's doing, when you can't just see where he is, it gets difficult to trust God when we just don't know what God is up to and we can't see God at work or understand that God is working it becomes difficult to trust but I stopped by to share this morning that we must continue to trust in the Lord with all our heart watch this lean not to your own understanding, in all our ways, acknowledge him. He will direct our path. You see, when we trust God, we can have a different outlook on whatever it is that we go through in life. And sometimes we just don't understand that our outlook on a situation oftentimes determines our outcome of the situation. 
When we look at it negatively, then we'll experience negativity. But when we look with positivity, then what we're going through becomes a learning experience. When we look at it as impossible, then we'll never experience anything. But when we look at it with possibility, we have the opportunity to experience everything. When we look at it as the end, we may short circuit our life. But when we look at it as a transition, then we can experience having a new lease on life. That's why the Bible says with man, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Ahaz looked at Israel and Syria and saw a terrible threat, but God looked at Israel and Syria and saw two stubs of firewood. Are y'all with me here? Uh, to, to, to the Lord, they were all smoke, no fire. Okay. They were all bark, no bite. Okay. They were all talk, no action. Certainly, the king of Israel and the king of Syria had their plans. They had taken evil counsel against Judah. They wanted to attack Jerusalem, defeat the capital of, Ju of, of Judah, make a gap in the walls, and then remove Ahaz so they could set up their own king. But man's plans cannot supersede God's will. All right, let me say that one more time. Man's plans, no matter what they might be, cannot supersede God's will. God was not worried about their plans. And I got news for you this morning. If God ain't worried, why should we be worried? They, 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 they looked like a big flaming threat to Ahaz. Uh, but God looked and saw smoke and assured Ahaz, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. Now that sounds like a whole another text right there. That sounds like a whole another thing I could preach about. But uh, 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 that sounds a lot like no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Are y'all with me? That's a, another scripture in that book of Isaiah. That, that, that sounds a lot like if God be for us, who can be against us? That, that, that sounds a whole lot like all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. You see, we can see the enemy in front of us, but we are assured it won't prosper against us. And here's the challenge to Ahaz, and here's the challenge to you and I today. Are we going to stand on the promises of God. Are y'all with me here? Are we going to stand on the promises or are we just going to sit down on the premises? Are y'all with me here? When God makes a promise, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. So it's incumbent upon us that if God makes a promise, that we stand on the promises of our God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord, not in what you see, trust in the Lord, not in what you have, trust in the Lord, not in what you think, trust in the Lord. King Ahaz, um, you've got to believe the word of God and stand on the promises of God. Sister, brother, you've got to believe the word of God and stand on the promises of God. God has already decreed it will not succeed. God went on to tell Ahaz, ask for a sign. Anything for me to prove to you, my God, that my word is true. That my word is my bond. That I say what I mean. And I mean what I say. But, but, but Ahaz refuses. So God uh, says, since I told you to ask for a sign, and you don't want to ask for a sign, then I'm going to give myself a sign. Y'all, did y'all? All right, all right. He says, since you refuse to ask for a sign, 
you don't want to ask for a sign, then I'll give myself a sign. All right, they say the third time's a charm. Um, if you don't want to ask for a sign, um, and, and I told you to ask for a sign, he says, I'm going to give myself a sign. Uh, therefore, the Lord himself will give a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive, bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. This word that Isaiah shares is a prophetic word about a sign which has both near and far implications. Near, it refers to God giving Ahaz a sign that within a few years, both Israel and Syria would be crushed. This was a promised sign of deliverance to Judah. Far, it refers to the birth of Jesus Christ, who is a promised sign of ultimate deliverance to the entire world. So God has always used signs to get the attention of his people and deliver his message. Let me move. Um, this prophetic word speaks about the birth of Jesus, who serves as a sign of God's promise. Uh, this verse begins with a sign of God's provision, if you're taking notes. A sign of God's provision. When Ahaz wouldn't ask for a sign, God says, that's all right, I'll give a sign. The Lord himself, in the Hebrew, uh, that's Adonai. Adonai means the all-sufficient one. He really didn't need Ahaz to ask. No. He was just allowing him the opportunity to ask because the Lord is already all-sufficient. In essence, the Lord will do with or without what we ask. Are y'all with me here? He'll do it though it may be rejected or despised. He'll do it because it's important to the welfare of his people. It's clearly impli uh, uh, implied here. That the sign should be such that only God could give it. All right. Only God could perform it. Only God could work it out. Only God could make it happen. It would be a demonstration of God's provision. Somebody say provision. For God's people. Um, and it's good to know that God takes care of his people. Are y'all? Uh, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, heal the land. Isn't it good to know that we mean so much to God that even in our doubt, even in our fear, God still provides for us. God still makes a way for us. God still supplies for us. It's good to know that God looks out for us. Are y'all with me here? Even when we're not looking for God. Let, let me get out of here. It's a sign of God's provision. Somebody say provision. But then this verse is also a sign of God's purpose. Somebody say purpose. He uses the word behold. Somebody say behold. Um, behold is an interjection that is commonly inserted uh, in between texts in the Bible. All right. It's used to arrest the attention. It's an indication that something of importance is about to be said. Or something of importance is about to be done. It serves to designate persons, things, places, and actions. It's used in lively descriptions and animated discourse. When something out of the ordinary is being said or will occur or demands our attention, he uses the word, behold. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man hears my voice and opens up the door, I'll come in and sup with him and him with me. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in you. And behold, I'm with you always, even until the end. Of, it arrests our attention. Behold. Uh, uh, and so it, uh, it was an event in the text which would have an important impact on the people of Israel and all of their descendants. Behold, this is why I'm telling you, Ahaz, these two nations will not prevail. Behold, this is what the world has been waiting for since Genesis 3.15. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, bring forth a son. I'm almost there. Y'all walk with me. It's a sign of God's provision. Somebody say provision. It's a sign of God's purpose. Somebody say purpose. But then this verse is also a sign of God's power. Somebody say power. Look at this, y'all. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. See, y'all read that too fast. You mean to tell me that a virgin shall conceive? That's not natural. That's not how it happens. No. That, that's not a normal birth. Uh, in fact, that sounds impossible. That word for virgin is oftentimes used to refer to a young woman. But in this context, it denotes a young woman that has never been intimate with a man. So how in the world can a woman who's never known a man conceive? It only happens by the power of God. Are, are y'all with me here? God's got all power. God's got sovereign power. God can do what God wants, how God wants, when God wants, to whomever God wants, for however long God wants. Now that's, that's power. Uh, when God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, that was power. When Isaac was born to Sarah and Abraham in their old age, that was power. When God dispatched ten plagues of Egypt, that was power. When the Israelites were able to cross the Red Sea on dry land while Pharaoh's army drowned in the same water, that's power. When God safely returned the three Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace, that's power. When God safely shut the mouths of the lions while Daniel slept, that was power. When Elijah was fed by the brook and down at the widow woman's house, that was power. But can I tell you that when God overshadowed a woman and superseded the natural process that he created for procreation and infused holy blood and allowed that which is holy to be born through that which is carnal, that's power. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. Let me get out of here, y'all. It's a sign of God's provision. It's a sign of God's purpose. It's a sign of God's power. But I'm closing when I tell you it's a sign of God's promise. Isaiah says, therefore, yeah, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Just sounds like another ordinary name. But when you look over in the New Testament, uh, chapter 1 of Matthew, uh, somewhere around the 23rd verse, it tells us what the name Emmanuel means. Uh, Emmanuel means God with us. <laughs> you just missed your reason to shout this morning. Uh, you see, all throughout the Old Testament, uh, the people of God could relate to God being 
above them. God was holy. Heaven was his throne. Earth was his footstool. In fact, in the previous chapter, when Isaiah saw the Lord, he was high and lifted up. They could even relate to God being for them. Because all throughout the Old Testament, God has always been for his people. But now, this name Emmanuel implies that not only is God above them, not only is God for them, but now God will be with them. I wish I had somebody. It was a promise that God made before the foundation of the earth that the Lamb of God had already been slain. It was a promise that God made in the Garden of Eden when he cursed the enemy and told them that her offspring will bruise his head. It was a promise that God made that God himself would appear in human form. And John's gospel shares how God fulfilled that promise for God so loved the world uh, that he gave um, his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life uh, for he came not into the world uh, to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved uh, it was because uh, God made us a promise that God was willing to allow his son to come to this earth, take on human form uh, in order that he might pay the debt that sin demanded. Uh, Paul said it this way, uh, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of men, uh, and being found in the appearance of God, a man. He humbled himself uh, and became obedient to death, uh, even until the death of the cross. Uh, and because God made a promise, uh, Jesus uh, left his throne in glory, made earth his dwelling place, so that we might one day have a home in glory. Jesus went through the process of human birth so that we might be born again. He occupied a stable in Bethlehem so we might inherit a mansion in the sky. He subjected himself to an earthly mother so that we could have access to a heavenly father. He walked the dusty roads of Palestine so that one day we can walk the roads of glory. He became the ultimate sacrifice for sin so that we could experience the gift of salvation. He was obedient and endured the cross so that one of these days we might wear a crown. That's a sign of God's promise. God loved us so much that God was willing to send God's self as a sign so that we get the promises of our God. God promised to be with us. God promised to hear our cry. God promised to make a way out of no way. God promised to take care of us. God promised to fight our battles. God promised to strengthen us. God promised to lead and guide us all the way. Shout yeah! God promised that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God promised that one of these days, when it's all over down here, when we put our Bibles down for the last time, when, when we whisper our last prayer, when we sing our favorite song for the last time, we would receive, he would receive us unto himself. And he promised that we would live with him 
in eternity. My sisters and brothers, we stand on the promises of God. For God's promises are yea and amen. Thank God for Jesus who is a sign of God's promise. And can I tell y'all, He not only did he promise he was going to send his son, which he did, but he promised that his son is coming back again. That, that, that's, that's the advent that we anticipate. That one of these days, he'll crack the sky. The trumpet shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise. And they who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And I don't know how you feel about it, but when I see Jesus, eh, the man who died for me, when I see Jesus, the one who set me free, amen, amen. amen. Everybody stand there. Everybody standing up. A sign of God's promise. Therefore, the Lord Himself, y'all see that? Will give you a sign. See, don't read that too fast. You know, I study grammar in college. The Lord Himself will give you a sign. See, when you, when you read it, what some people think is that that just means that God is going to give a sign. But, but when you read it in its context, what it really means is that the sign that he's given is himself. <laughs> the Lord himself. Are y'all with me here? The promise is God himself. <laughs> Can I tell y'all what that's like? That's like when, when we have sick folk here at the church. And they want somebody to come visit them. And the pastor sends the deacons because that's what the deacons do. But those times when the pastor himself I wish I had somebody y'all and, and, and here it is I don't know what it is because the deacons are an extension of me I'm an extension of them but when I show up myself that's what God is saying God is saying I'm going to do this thing myself are y'all with me here I'm going to be the promise myself I'm going to make a way for you, myself. That's, that's a sign of God's promise. That when nobody else could do it, God said, here am I. I'll send myself. You know what kind of setup that is? God, God put into effect that the wages of sin was death. God knew that nobody's blood was good enough. Y'all with me here? So God sent himself to do it for himself. Watch this, y'all. Before he even uh, uh, created us to begin with. Which means that it was a setup in eternity past. That God had already made the way even before it was even necessary for a way to be made. I wish I had, I, I wish God himself. He set it up. He said, you know what, this is what needs to be done. And I know you ain't going to be able to do it. So I'll just come myself and take care of the problem for me. Don't miss that, y'all. He said, I'm going to take care of my own problem. Are y'all with me here, God? 
God said, I know this is the problem. I know I'm the only one that can take care of the problem, so I'm going to take care of my problem. Because the wage had to be paid for by blood. And, you know, when we try, we instituted, you know, the sacrificial lambs and turtle doves. And we had the Day of Atonement once a year. But that wasn't good enough. Are y'all with me here? Because God never designed for atonement to come from the blood of animals. You said teach, right? From the blood of animals. It only could come from his blood. His untarnished blood. His, his unblemished blood. His holy blood. Which makes the birth of Jesus even that more spectacular. Because in addition to a virgin having a baby, God had to infuse holy blood into Jesus. So that Jesus' blood was unblemished. And All right, I'm sorry, I'm done. A sign of God's promise. Can I, can, I, can I tell y'all that this is my favorite part of the year? Between this and Easter. But I really like this because I, I, love, I love the implications that the Advent has. It's a celebration, yes, that Jesus came already. But it's anticipation that Jesus is coming back again. And I think I might have said it. I don't know if it was on this prayer call or the last one. I'm in no rush to see Jesus. But y'all, I can't wait to see him for myself. Are y'all with me here? Amen. Everybody standing. The brethren are coming. There may be someone here under the sound of my voice, unsaved or unchurched or unsure. Unsaved. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Unchurched, you're not a member of any church where Jesus is Lord. The Bible is the instruction manual. The Holy Spirit leads and guides all the way. If that's you today, why don't you come and give the brother in your hand, most importantly, give God your heart. If you're online and you're joining with us, type your name in the chat. Amen. Say, I want to be saved. I want to connect with this church. Whatever your desire is, we will make sure, amen, that we continue to help you through your journey in this Christian life. Again, is there one today? I wouldn't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. The next second of breath we breathe is not promised to us. Is there one today? Is there one? Is there one? God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus as a sign of your promise. You promised that you would take care of us. You promised that you would provide for us. And thank you, God, for the provision that you've given us of eternal life. Thank you, God, because we don't have to be bound by sin. No, we, we, don't, we don't have to adhere to the power of sin. But, God, you are the greatest power. And you're able to turn us around. You're able to cleanse us. In fact, your word says that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse or purify us of all unrighteousness. The context we know, Lord, means that you're able to wipe our slate clean. So, God, we're grateful and thankful for the provision you've made. We thank you for the purpose. We thank you for the power. Oh, God, we thank you for the promise. The promise that not only will we be able to get through this life, abundantly, but then we can live eternally with you in glory. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for how you have blessed us. This is our prayer. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, amen. 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 As we remain standing and we prepare to leave from this place, but never from the presence of God, amen. It's offering time. Um, and can I tell you, offering is still a part of worship. Amen. It's still a part of worship. We have because we give. We give because we have. Uh, the Lord has been good to us. And as a result, we just give a portion back to the Lord of what he has blessed us with. There are multiple ways of giving electronically through the mail. You can give even here today. Um, we'll have trustees at the doors on your way out of the door. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you continue to do. Um, and we pray um, in the mighty name of Jesus that um, that the fruit of of your gifts are seen in the work that we do here 
at our church. Amen. Now, God, we thank you for every giver and every gift. We pray that no one go wanting ever for supporting ministry. Help us, God, to be um, cheerful givers, not out of necessity, nor out of uh, nor begrudgingly, but that we give from our heart, God. Uh, for you love a cheerful giver. Thank you for what has been done, and thank you for what continues to be done. And we look forward to how you're going to bless us, press down, shaken together, and running over, God. We expect it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that when we leave this place, Lord, that we never leave your presence. Thank you for sending your son Jesus as a sign of your promise. You promise that you will take care of us. You promise that you will provide for us. You promise that you'll lead and guide us all the way. Pray that when we leave this place, that we will never leave your presence. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise in this place.